sort of nonsense, when really the best thing for his footballing career was to move two years ago. Surprised he didn't do it then, even more surprised he didn't do it last that. summer, and now we're left with this. But it's all predictable. But uh, can, I, can I just go to Sid? Is that all right? Yeah, absolutely. So, 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 Sid, is the kind of strategy here that maybe Real Madrid had a deal in place for him to come next season when Benzema left? Benzema surprised everyone by, of course, now going to Saudi Arabia. So now Kylian Mbappe's seen the opportunity to go a year early? Well, I think in terms of the letter, one, one, one thing that, that occurs to me, and of course we saw this a little bit with Lionel Messi the first time he tried to move away from Barcelona, is that there's a difference between what you tell the club and having it in writing. So in a way, the letter is really just the formalisation of that process, isn't it? They say, listen, I had to advise you before the 31st that I didn't want to continue, or at least that I didn't want to extend the deal. And so here it is in writing. Everything's clear. Um, in terms of his position... He's now said, as, you, as you've already mentioned today, that he wants to stay for another season. I think this is a way of saying to, to Real Madrid, look, I could be available now. I think it is a way of maybe trying to accelerate that. But also the fact that he's saying that he wants to stay is really about trying to ensure, isn't it, that, that Paris Saint-Germain are forced to either drop their price to Real Madrid and in particular, I guess, as well, to say to them, don't try and make me go anywhere else. Don't try and make me go to a place that I, I don't want to go to. I, I think the departure of Karim Benzema 12 months ahead of schedule does accelerate things a little bit. I think that he's in a position now in which he knows that the only club that he wants to go to, the only club that can pay any really significant money for him in terms of the ones that he wants is, is, is Real Madrid. But of course, he wants that money to be as little as possible. Real Madrid, to be perfectly honest with you, I think wouldn't have had that much of a problem with waiting a year. In fact, that was the initial plan. And although Benzema went early, they still would have been in a position where they felt to themselves, OK, this is fine. And one thing's for sure, Madrid are not going to risk putting a foot out of line at this point. This is for Mbappe to put this in a position in which it can be done easily. They are not going to get burnt again. Or at least they don't want to be burnt again. And I imagine that's what the sentiment of the fans are as well. Don't mess with us again. We already got burnt, as you say, the first time round. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when, when that first happened, and, and bear in mind, of course, there were two summers uh, in which Mbappe and Real Madrid were very close. There's 2021, when Real Madrid started offering lots of money for him. And as you've already mentioned, and I think this is a big question, why have Paris Saint-Germain changed their position? In that first summer in 2021, there was a, an offer of 200 million euros and Paris Saint-Germain said no, and they took the risk of him walking away for free. In the second summer, in which Real Madrid thought, well, we didn't quite get to the summer, did we? But very nearly, in which we're, we're coming towards the summer and Real Madrid thought, it's done. He's agreed with us, it's fine. But they didn't actually have it tied down. They didn't actually have a, a legally binding agreement, but they thought it was done and it had all been agreed. And Real Madrid, and, and I, you know, I, I really can't stress this enough, Real Madrid were convinced it was done. As far as Real Madrid was concerned, it was done. Real Madrid were briefing that it was done. There wasn't the slightest doubt, and then suddenly he backs out. Now, he backs out for all sorts of reasons, and when you think about the kind of pressure that was brought to bear on him on a political level as well as a footballing level, and he ends up staying. But I think, as, as Craig mentioned, the fact that he signs this letter within six or seven weeks of having renewed that deal shows you that really and truly, even then he was thinking, I'm not sure this is a great idea. Even then he was looking for a, for a way out. And so at that point, Real Madrid have had one summer they tried to buy him and couldn't, one summer they thought they were getting him for free and couldn't. And now they're thinking, OK, we've had this. We were angry with you. And as you say, Real Madrid fans were angry with you. And a lot of people were thinking, you know what, we should never go back to this guy. This guy can't come again. You can't do this kind of thing to Real Madrid. But the bottom line is he's really, really good at football. And he's the best player out there and he's the best player on the market. And so there's, there's a, degree of, there's a re degree of reconciliation, a series of conversations, and Madrid back in the position where they think, OK, fine, we wait till 2024. What this really does is change the timings of what might happen next. Right. The only reason he's saying, oh, I want to stay here another year, is to cover his back. Why would he want to stay at Paris Saint-Germain another year? Right. There's, there's, no, there's no football reason. So why would he want to stay? He's covering his tail, that's what he's doing. And also opening the door for Real Madrid. He's got, please come and get me, written all over it. Frank, do you think the fact everything seems to be crumbling around him with regards to PSG, obviously Messi leaving, Neymar wants out as well, they're not going to do anything in the Champions League, certainly doesn't look like once again next season, that he's just kind of pulling the parachute now, he wants out. <laughs> 
Yes, I think it's the reason why, and and I disagree with uh, with TV in the fact that next last season he didn't think that uh, uh, he, they couldn't do anything football wise. I think it's I think he stayed maybe maybe because one day maybe we'll know the truth. But uh, I think he stayed because he thought with Messi <coughs> and finally maybe a good team he will uh, achieve something in the Champions League. Maybe that's the reason why he stayed. Uh, but this season, with Messi leaving, leaving, with maybe no very good players coming, uh, as we, we we know so far, he, he, he wants to leave. He wants to leave, and uh, and there is the is the, the the Benzema uh, move, who accelerated uh, the 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 situation and the thought of uh, of Mbappe coming to Real Madrid. But it makes me laugh, you know, because I want to see the fans reacting. That they, they didn't like him. They didn't like his reaction. <laughs> they they're upset, and I want to see him coming to uh, to Santiago Bernabeu and see how he how it works. I don't think he ever felt he could win the Champions League, because if you go if, if we scroll back to the comments from from Julian Laurent, was not too long after signing this contract, which might which may have uh, resulted in the letter going in, was that he was getting frustrated with the lack of signings that he perceived that they needed. Mm -hmm. So he already knew, even with Neymar and Messi there, that there was other departments of this team that, that needed strengthened, and he was getting frustrated that the club had so-called broken the promises of what they were going to do for him. So is it, is, there any, is it any surprise this whole club is still the big circus that it is? I mean, it's, it's, it's just bonkers. Um, if it does happen, Vinicius, Rodrigo, Mbappe, front three, does that work OK? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Are we happy with that? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah? Please and thank you. Uh, I imagine that's what, that's what they're looking at, aren't they? The Madrid fans said. Well, it's the, it's the obvious choice, isn't it, for a forward line for that to be the front three. I think there is a slight doubt. And that slight doubt, to be honest with you, is Vinicius. What do you do with Vinicius and Mbappe? Now, of course, when you put these three names together, you go, well, this works OK. Vinicius on the left, Rodrigo on the right, Mbappe through the middle. But Mbappe has said before, and we see in the way that he plays and the, the spaces that he naturally looks for, that he tends to drift to the left. That he tends to want to play off the left-hand side, come in from there or move from the middle into those left-hand side channels and not necessarily play right through the middle as, as I suppose, I, mean, I don't want to call him a traditional number nine because of course he wouldn't quite be that, but as, as a more of a, a natural number nine position. That's not really what he wants. So there is a slight problem, which is that Real Madrid's best player this year and their most exciting one does play, in theory at least, in the same position as him. Um, but yeah, you're right. You still look at it on paper and you go, hey, this is a pretty tasty forward. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.